Okay, let's get started. Good afternoon. I know it was a long and busy day, so thanks for coming anyway. Um, the next hour we are going to talk about the topic the different fans and different needs and how technology is used to scale that. So in order to keep you entertained for this last hour, we decided to invite a bunch of experts to the stage and I invite you with me, please welcome them on stage and I hand over to Julian. Thank you, Wolfgang. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Julian. I'm leading the clan management for Infon Digital and together with Damien here, leading our center of innovation. Um, we welcome you here in Sporbis to talk about our masterclass. Um, for the next hour or so, we uh, would like to talk about innovation and how technology helps, um, let's say, Infon and the group, but also our clients to reach more audience and to engage a little bit more audiences in order to um, leverage um, the content. So here with us on the stage, tonight or this afternoon, live from Israel. They just came in, so they were a bit surprised by the snow, uh, <laughs> even more than we did. <laughs> so we have uh, Haggai from Deep, we have Amit from Minute, and we have Tal from <laughs> WC. So they will give you um, an overview of what they're doing and also what we were doing with them. Um, so innovation at the core of Infront, um, innovation is very important for us. As you know, we're all part of the attention economy. Um, and as you know as well, like there is a lot of shift and there is a lot of changes on the market currently, convergence, a lot of things happening very fast. And we all need to be uh, agile and we all need to be, uh, let's say, adapt ourselves to be relevant on the marketplace. It's more fragmented than ever and it's more challenging than ever. And in order to respond to those challenges, Infront has been investing heavily in digital in the past years, continues to invest in digital. We are currently 250 people um, working in digital only. Um, and this is to support the group objectives um, in enhancing the media and marketing businesses. So we want to create more services and more values for our clients. Infront, as you know, has been very strong traditionally in media and marketing from let's say the traditional sports marketing side. And we here um, with our digital strategy and digital skills and capabilities to try to enhance those capabilities, but also try to shift and to reach, let's say new revenue streams um, by building up direct to consumer capabilities. So we will show you today a couple of examples and what we've been doing thanks to the technology and thanks to innovation and also what kind of successes we had. So the, the innovation objectives are really, you know, talking about digital strategy for us, like innovation is obviously part of it. Um, so when you talk about convergence, everything is linked, you know, the difference between TV, between digital platform, et cetera, doesn't make too much sense anymore. And obviously innovation helps us to drive all those efforts and to adapt ourselves to serve the market. So the objectives in terms of innovation really across the group and across everything we're doing is threefold. The first one is obviously to enhance and to increase client satisfaction. So we want to bring new, new solutions, we want to bring new product in order for the client to meet the new audiences. Obviously, as you know, they spend less and less time on TV. In 2018, for the first time, people were spending more time global and digital media than TV. Um, so we need to do something to reach those audiences. The second point, which is very important for us, and you know, Infront has not been traditionally known to be very innovative, or at least when I joined the group two years ago, this was not the case, and I think now this is shifting slowly. There is all the question of mindset. We need to be more agile. We need to be able to respond quicker to what's going on in the market. We also need to be able to bring solutions and product quicker to our, to our clients. And this is why it's so important that we have them in the team, in the center of innovation that can push us, you know, recommendations, um, you will explain later how we work and what's the pipeline in terms of startups. But for us, we have weekly um, contacts. We have and we know what the clients want from the market. And you can push us what are the last things from the startup world. And then depending on, you know, if there is interesting uh, things, then we will implement pilot and certain things that you will show in a couple of minutes. 
obviously we do all this to also diversify our revenue streams um, there's a lot of questions lately how we can make money out of digital um, and so we try to explore this technology also that helps us to scale a little bit what we're doing it's working, it's working? yeah innovation wow <coughs> so concretely what that means for us in terms of strategy uh, and and digital we have four main pillars um, we work across strategy, uh, across product and platform, content and monetization. And basically in terms of value chain, we always um, talk about three main phases, which is the REM, so reach, engage and monetize. So you can take an horizontal funnel. So the reach is basically casting a wide net um, try to reach the biggest audience possible. Engage, you try to convert and then monetize, obviously drive revenues out of those audiences. So um, here on stage, for example, Deep and WC, they help us to uh, have a wider reach um, and faster. So that's why technology here is very helpful. We can scale the content to reach more people and to personalize the content. And then Minute is helping us to engage. And then hopefully if everything is going well at the start and middle of, of the funnel, we should be able to monetize at the end. Finally, um, there is a service aspect to it. So uh, um, we are delivering ourselves the solution. So for example, once we identify good opportunities with the team. Um, we are then uh, delivering the service and working with our friends and partners there. Um, so now I'll hand over the, the mic to Damon. He will explain to you how this all works. Thanks, Julian. Hi, guys. Um, just on the service side, we had a very good example together with WC uh, during the IHF event where comparing to the year before, we created 300 videos. Last year, we created 5,000 videos. So this is an example how we can use technology in order to create a better service and, of course, more personalized. What I will discuss uh, shortly, because I want to give enough space to the guys um, that came from Israel, is basically what we do and why we do it. Um, we started this journey around a year ago where we identified two key problems around the startups. And these two problems, and I think that if we, I don't know if, if you are familiar with the research that CB Insight did uh, on why startups fail, the two main reasons are A, there's no need. So a startup develops a company with a product that no one is going to use. Secondly, they are developing something, but they don't know how to sell it, and they don't know how to price it, and they don't have a business model. And this is where the guys in the back, um, our guys, brought their vast experience and knowledge together with our sales guys. We are able to solve these two problems uh, together with solving, I think, the main problem for our clients. And I think combining these two allow us to really make uh, something big. So just quickly, I'll try to explain how we work. Um, in order to do so, we understood that we need to have uh, a synergy within the units. And that's the reason we brought um, all our guys, meaning all different uh, business units, so in the innovation committee, so this is the IC, we have the CFO, the uh, business development, the marketing, uh, digital, sales, legal, etc. And then um, together we gather all the information and all the needs from the market. And of course, now I'll explain how we do it. So what the, the first step is scouting for the right companies. Now, what are the right companies? For us, it means that we are scouting for companies that are answering the needs of our clients. Meaning if we identify that we need something to help create more videos in a faster way, this is why we approach WSC. So this is the first part and this is the scouting. So the center of innovation, which I lead together with, with my team is basically uh, in charge for that. We are trying to find the right companies to solve the right 
problems. Then once we scouted for the right companies, we go back to our business units. So you can see that the funnel opened and then we get their feedbacks. So what do you think about this company? What do you think about the other company? Do you think their product really solves something? And if that's the case, we get into a deeper analysis. So this is the assessing part. The, the assessing part is comprised with tech analysis, business models, um, sales, etc. And then we bring it to the innovation committee. Once the innovation committee approves it, we go into the piloting phase where I'm sure that you're aware of it, but many startups uh, today are in the ABC mode, always be closing. So they want to say the right word and they want to solve all the problems. But then we understood, and I'm sure that you also understood that, it's not the case. Sometimes they sell something that they are not able to deliver and this is why we do the pilots in order to assess it and in order to really understand if there's a really uh, 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 a working solution. Then we go back to the business units uh, after piloting in order to implement this and to share it with the clients. And then you see the partnering phase which based on the piloting and on everything, we decide how we want to proceed with a specific company. For example, we can share that we, we're doing something with WSC, uh, we're doing something with uh, Deep, and we're going to do something with Minute. And I think that in the crowd we have also Tokabot, that we're doing great stuff together. Um, and this is exactly what we're trying to do. So after we analyze, after we did some pilots, we bring them as part of our portfolio and we create new products. So I can also share that with Hagai, for example, we identify that the technology is very interesting and we are working together on new products for the market based on uh, our knowledge. So a quick snapshot on what we did uh, during the last year. Um, we saw around 150 companies, um, then went back, as I mentioned, to the business units and then went into a deep diving uh, with 40 of them, uh, piloted with around 10, uh, and then we are in a uh, process with so partnering, investing, and building new things with six of them. Another thing that we thought, and this relates also to what Julian said, um, we identified that there's a very uh, interesting trend and I think all three of you uh, are using AI uh, in order to scale and in order to personalize the content. This is how we tackle the problem. So we identify the market trend and then we come up with relevant companies. Once we understand that these are relevant, we approach them and then we start the process. Now if you can see here, so you can see on the reach we have Deep and we have WSC, and then on the engagement we have Minute, and then we have others, okay? So this is how we, we do it. We do it also with machine learning. We do it also around sponsorship. So we have all the verticals that we are working on based on the market needs that our guys uh, refers to, and this is how we tend to do it. Now, guys, I'm happy to bring you back. Um, we will start with Hagai. Um, just so really, so you know, um, these are the taglines for the companies. No, no, you, you have, you can stay there. Um, go ahead. Hi everyone. <coughs> Thanks for staying so late. Um, don't let uh, Damien's blue b blonde hair mislead you. He's also came today from Israel. Um, <coughs> so we're all about. I'm going to need uh, to stand there anyway, right? Does it work? Yeah. Okay. So we'll start vi with the video because it's going to save me a lot of talk. <laughs> 
Every day around the globe, millions of stories are created. Every event, every story is told multiple times, in multiple formats and through multiple channels. Stories are constantly fighting for our attention, so they must be highly visual, super interesting, and clearly value added. Otherwise, if the story doesn't grab our attention in three seconds, we're bored and we switch. So content creators need to do more, much more with less. More stories with less resources and less time. Deep helps them do just that. It's a platform for visual storytelling at scale. For example, a short title on a soccer site is transformed by Deep automatically into visual stories, videos, polls, anecdotes, and all of it in just a few seconds. And these can be placed in blogs, news, tweets, Facebook, and virtually anywhere, promoting interest, engagement, and revenues. Deep uses artificial intelligence to, one, learn millions of facts with constant updating, two, analyze text with Deep's proprietary lingo, and three, create visual stories based on facts and lingo. Let's look at another short title, this time about Lady Gaga is transformed by Deep automatically into visual stories in just a few seconds. And these again can be placed anywhere, promoting interest, engagement, and revenues. Deep, visual storytelling at scale. Be part of the story. Okay, so uh, the video talked about this. I don't think I need to repeat myself. Um, <coughs> I do want to focus and say that our vision here is that this is from a show in the US but I like that sentence very much all facts are useful it's just the context that changes okay at any given time there are a lot of facts that are irrelevant but in a given time when you're reading a given story these facts are very relevant and very engaging but the ability to turn them into an engaging visual story that what users need to engage with today is takes a lot of time and a lot of money and that's what we're aiming at what we have is, uh, I'm not, we have just a few minutes and I'm not gonna go into the whole architecture, but just to give you a feel, in general we have uh, a full end-to-end -end solution where we have, and we have our own proprietary knowledge base which has its own facts and can be fully integrated with proprietary databases as well. So for example, CHL and IHF and other uh, uh, proprietary solutions. And that content is automatically used with our AI to create uh, visual stories automatically uh, or manually, we give both options. There's an editor and there's a piece of code that the editor puts in the article or wherever and this code automatically reads any piece of content, text, and adds on it, creates. It doesn't look in the internet for videos that are relevant. It creates in live a story that's relevant for that article and it's created specifically for what the writer just did. Um, we saw this in the video so I'm gonna jump on this and save some time. I'm going to spend the time just maybe showing you because the technology is a bit, um, it's, it's, as Damien said, there's a lot of options, maybe too many. So we're focusing on some use cases that are working for us and I want to share with you. But the technology, uh, we have many other ideas as well. We're working with Infront and their clients to really figure out what works for them as well. So as an example, first of all, video production. So these are not video of live events or so on. These are videos of information, knowledge. So if you're writing an article on any piece of content that has to do with a specific sports event, so Buffon getting a red card before the Mondial, uh, you're and you everyone wrote about it, as you write that, the system would create for you a video that's complementary for that, like five other top goal keepers with red cards this season or things like that, and it would create a video from it automatically that would be appended to your, to your article. Um, it can be used for sponsorship. This is a Time Warner movie that came out uh, this year, Game Night, and where they wanted every game to be uh, sponsored with their uh, brand. And when you clicked and chose the team, this re was replaced with, uh, of course, the trailer for the movie. Uh, what they found out is because we can do this automatically, it's relevant to every article, the engagement was double any manual uh, creation. And of course, we could do it for every article and every game. Um, this is an interesting use of the technology as well. In this case, there's thousands of pages that are maintained by the AI 
that are feed pages for every player, every team, every matchup, because every matchup also has history, present, and future. All of these, and of course league, they all have feed pages, and they're creating SEO capabilities. We just started a few months, and now they're at a run rate of 20 million subscribers a year just on this product uh, that is maintained by AI. We can see your examples that we did with CHL. Uh, so uh, in the past, it's a big challenge for especially leagues and teams that are not publishers in their DNA to maintain social, but social is important. We allow for full social management and uh, creation of content, all of these content, as you can see, uh, which is relevant to uh, matches, results, fixtures, um, quotes, uh, could be videos. Um, you can see here uh, use of uh, um, uh, the system for uh, other stuff. Uh, all of this allowed uh, in-front clients to suddenly go from five posts uh, a week to as much as they wanted. Okay, I'm talking about hundreds easily with uh, no scale at, uh, of people and with uh, also uh, an end result, which by the way, uh, when we did the research, all of these likes, um, uh, they're above average even of video clips. So relevant information that's given fast in a visual way creates engagement that's far better than just generic content that's, that's stitched into an article. So if you go to most places, there's, you know, one of our clients has 20,000 articles a month. So he has 100 videos. So those videos are not viewed because their relevancy to the article is really not, there's no connection. So... I think to sum it up, yeah, to finalize, we use uh, our AI to not sh to help the creators. Uh, we don't do in-depth uh, articles. We don't do um, uh, th those type of uh, creative uh, thinking. We leave that for the editors, and we allow our uh, AI to actually help him produce all of the rest of the content that he needs in order to engage and reach uh, his customers and monetize on it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hagai. Yeah, just a please welcome Tal from WSC. Oh, hi. Are we good? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. My name is Tal, and I lead the business development team and innovation for WSC Sports uh, in Tel Aviv. So at WSC, we developed the technology that automates the sports creation creation and distribution of sports highlights. We do that in real time in, in pretty large scale. Here you can see some of our customers. So our customers is anybody who has sports rights. It can be leagues like the Bundesliga, w uh, which we just signed and the NBA. It can be tournaments, KHF, US Open. And it can be media companies like YouTube. And in general, uh, we can work with anybody who has sports rights. We're around 100 people and based in uh, Tel Aviv on the sunshiny be uh, beach, even though we like the snow in uh, Düsseldorf as well. A word about uh, what the technology does is that on one side we're ingesting a live streaming of a sports game and we can automatically detect using machine learning to understand whatever happened in the game. So we understand that a specific play was a goal by uh, Leo Messi or a specific dunk was done by LeBron James. But we not only point to a point in time when something happened, we also create a perfect clip out of it as a professional video editor would. So you don't want to cut the commenter saying what a crazy goal, you want to make sure the end is perfect. If you remember these leagues, La Liga, Bundesliga, IHFR, can be broadcast in five to 20 languages. So the same goal will be cut differently for Tencent in China or for Spox in Germany. And on top of that, we also bring automatic rating to the plays. So you can listen with the commenter gets extremely excited or the crowd gets wild. And then as a wi sports rights owner, think of it as sort of Google's for sports. You have all of your sports uh, searchable uh, with all the metadata, perfect clips with ratings. And on top of that, in the cloud platform, we build tools for automatic production and fan engagement, which we'll see. Just one word how we do it. How, we, how did we understand that that was the goal by Neymar in the World Cup in Brazil? We use three main types of indicators. The first one is video analysis. Uh, deep learning has become, which people confuse with machine learning, extremely different. has become really good in image recognition in the last few years. 
really helps us understand uh, the box score and the numbers on the jersey. So first one is video. Second one is audio analysis, anything the commentators say. We're agnostic to any language, so we can work with any type of languages. And the third one is play-by-play -play data coming from the field. So in general, in eSport, you can bet on. Uh, yeah, there's companies like SportRadar and Okta and Shotlink getting play-by-play -play data from the field. We take the three video, audio, and play-by-play -play data, correlate them to create those perfect clips. Jumping to our product, our main product is called AVGen. AVGen stands for Automatic Video Generator. And the idea is to automatically generate videos. Uh, and the idea is to teach the system what is of interest, and then the system will create videos automatically for you, and we'll see those videos in a second. So we can set up a rule saying, any time player gets a red card in the Bundesliga, create a video of it, send it to his Twitter. Or any time a German goalkeeper gets to three saves, we want to send it to uh, its YouTube. We'll pl show a video of the actual product. This is the AVGen used by the NBA. In order to create a clip, you can choose a subject. It can be player, team, game, or an action. You can choose who the subject is, who the players are, what kind of videos do we want to create. Do we want to see three-pointers or dunks or assists? We can choose a period, so a specific game or a time or a, or a year or a month. Video length is really important to rights holders as they're really extremely restric restricted in most markets. We can put graphic bugs with sponsors and then where to publish it. And that's it. You press create. Uh, and the video is going to encode. So this creating this two-minute uh, um, highlight of Joe Bond James and Steph Curry used to take a professional video editor by the NBA around 45 minutes. It's cost around 70 euros. We shrink it down to 15 seconds. And just to see how the videos look, all the introduction is created automatically. We're taking the images from Guard the LeBron NBA's James image bank. Most of the way when he's out there. Curry, four to shoot, finds a little room, fires, and hits a three. So these videos have been reviewed hundreds of times as video editors. There is no way to know Curry that this was created by a machine and right not by a uh, professional video editor. Slam. Unable to catch the basketball, James. Now, if you just saw the lap, last play was a replay, which is extremely hard to detect because usually the replays are broadcast only two minutes after the play, and you need to understand that it's a, new, that it's a replay and not uh, just a new play. To sum up what we're doing with the NBA, uh, just last year we created 300,000 videos uh, in the year, taking all of the streams uh, in all of the languages and creating, uh, if you're looking at views, just 2 billion views on the NBA's Facebook page. But the trick is not to just create all of these videos, is to tailor them and publish them to specific markets, specific customers, and to understand what the fan wants. And for that, we have a few products that we're working with Infant um, on. Uh, first one is called the Highlight Machine, and the idea that the uh, direct to customer, specifically badminton, where the customer can choose what kind of plays you want to see, what kind of players, what kind of geographics. Another is the Facebook bot. Let's see if this video works. Yeah, it's going to work. So we did with Double IHF and Infront. I've created a Facebook bot, so we people would log into the Facebook page of the IHF and just say, I want to see the last play or specific plays or which team you want to see, and you will get automated highlights, and then it will be push notification to your phone whenever something happens. Um, I can figure out a lot, but it, it really cool bot that, that got uh, millions of views. A word about how we work with the Infront and how we, we met. So a year and a half ago, we started working uh, with Infront, and since then, there have been a tremendous help for us uh, in a few different, uh, let's call it, realms. The first one is that it's one of the only companies that at least we are working with that gets you as a company or as a startup an exposure to so many different customers. So it's not only teams, it's conferences and confederations and leagues and teams and broadcasters. And it's really amazing how this company can uh, take you after um, due diligence <laughs> and then uh, explain to everyone why, why they think you're good. The second one is that they have, and we found out this just in the last year, they have an amazing relationship with their customer. So in the end, if you think about it, IHF is actually Infront's customer, and we work with them through Infront. Um, so they don't only, Damien and his team not only manages the business uh, unit of uh, IHF, they, only, they also do the innovation. And when Damien says that a company should work with IHF, uh, they're accepting it, which is really, really, really valuable. And the third one is that they're quick. So usually when you work with companies of this size, uh, they are pretty slow. Uh, Infront has been really quick to respond and, and working with us, which is extremely important for startups uh, when time is your uh, biggest asset. Uh, so thank you for that. Damien, Julian, 
uh, and the whole thing for team. It's been really good. And, and this year it's going to be next year when I present, we're going to show a few really cool stuff. Uh, two big projects we did this year was, uh, without going too much into depth, uh, the IHF, lots of content, uh, lots of views, really successful project. Uh, and the second one was the Women's Handball Championship, the EHF. Uh, just to end with the video, uh, but summarize what we did with them. For the first time, we've also had the implementation of artificial intelligence with an Israeli startup called WSC, which has allowed our media team to produce 1,200 video clips, um, automated video clips during the championship, and that is about 10 times more video clips than we would ever have been able to produce before from a championship. This has led to almost um, 20 million video views on ehftv.com and all of our owned channels during the course of the championship. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tal. Just, just to add a little bit of context about what was shown. Um, you know, we don't work with the NBA. Our clients are, um, let's say, governing bodies, leagues, clubs. Um, they're not all uh, very big. So, you know, for example, for the International Ice Hockey Federation, they have two writers in the office. They have very limited budget. Um, during the World Championships, we hire two freelancers, but that's pretty much it, right? And this is, I think, a problem statement that all rights holders and all clubs and all leagues face. And for us to be able to scale the content, both from an infographics perspective, which is what Deep is doing, um, which also serve from the wave that infographics is driving extremely high engagement, close to videos, sometimes above videos, for us to work with them and to be able to reduce the money spent on content production, but to um, come from 300 to 5,000 clips, this is a total game changer. You can also you know, add brands um, far easier. Um, as you may know, um, you know, for example, usually the communication and edito editorial teams, they don't really know how to place brands. Uh, it's difficult, they don't have graphic designers. So with our brand activation team and such capabilities, it's very easy to create packages and then to push out all those all those content. So, um, you know, there is not only the NBA. <laughs> Usually we work with small clients. Champions Hockey League is a good example as well. Um, they have less than 100,000 per year for all day games, all content. And Deep has been very, very good for, for them and for us. So um, now we welcome Amit from Minute. The floor is yours. Good afternoon. Hi. We don't have to be so serious. It's OK. It's that time of the day that we can start, like, think of the end of the day. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amit, and I'm the founder and CEO of Minute. And we'll talk today about how to bring the power of video into the publisher's hands. Let's talk a little bit about Minute and then we'll go on to the actual products because we are not very interesting. So um, today Minute works with, again, a, a little bit more of the US side. Um, we're working with all the largest leagues and we're not only focusing on um, sports, but we always al also work with entertainment, news, Basically, everyone who has videos, we're good to work with them. Um, what we do, that's a very short slide with examples exactly what we do. We automatically identify what are the most interesting moments within videos. We're looking on objective stuff within the video, and we're looking on subjective 
actions that we might find inside. Not always the dunk is the most interesting part of the video. Sometimes when there's a fight between <laughs> two players somewhere there, that is actually the most interesting part of the video. What we see here is an example of engagement graph that we're building on each and every video based on different factors. And that's the first product. We automatically identifying all the videos that runs on the page, each and every article page, video page, or home page. We will an analyze the video itself, and then we will generate something that we called an APV. APV stands for Auto Preview Video. So basically, it's a teaser. We're generating a real-time teaser for the actual video itself. The mission here is to increase the consumption of videos on your sites. Um, we're doing something smart a little bit more. Um, how we do it? We're using crowdsource information from across the web, from the site, and we're using AI from computer vision, machine learning, and deep learning to analyze every frame of the video. Combining them together, we'll have heat maps on each and every video. And then what we do, we're generating a couple of options that we know that will work good, that we not only think that they will work good, we're actually testing it. Um, we will know on real time, with and without minute, how users are engaged with the content. So we know what is the uplift or the increase that we're generating on real time. The last thing that we do is performance monitoring. We're analyzing, we know that we're good, but we will test it all the time. We're not saying that that's the system, it works. We're checking ourselves all the time. Every two minutes, we're checking all our products. And then we know if we're over time, we're increasing or decreasing the consumption. The second product. So the first product is kind of easy, right? You have a video, Minute will generate a short teaser automatically. We will A-B test, we will understand that Minute create an increase, great. You can place it in any place that you want. The second thing that we do, we will take all the videos that you have on your site, on every place that you choose, home page, in article pages, social, whatever you want, we will generate the top highlights from each and every site. You can choose by category, you can choose by players, whoever you want. And then we will show only the teasers of those articles. The idea is that you'll put it on a very good locations on your site, so your users will expose more to video content. The idea is that every click that you will generate on one of those teasers will actually lead the users to the page. So you gain page view, another video view, revenue that comes from all kinds of options, and um, time on site. I can share some, a lot of information, but we can talk about it later. Or now, <laughs> basically. Um, so this is one of our biggest clients in the US. They've tested Minute for a long time um, with Minute, without Minute, sorry. They saw in CTR, which is click-through rate of 1.87 on pages without Minute clicked to watch the video itself. Behind the scenes, 80% of their revenue comes from those uh, video watch, video views. With Minute, we have increased into 5.38. That's a very dramatic increase in terms of video consumption. The idea is that they not only use it on their platforms, but also on other platforms. We will launch soon some uh, interesting stuff that we're doing with the search company and um, social. So they also use those teasers in order to drive more users back to their assets and then monetize it there. As for the top videos, um, that's the average of a couple of clients that we have today, around of 30 million page views per month with exposure to our component of 20%, $15 CPM. I know that some publishers is much higher and some is a little bit less, but that's the number. 
um, and 80% fill rate of their CPMs, they will generate a monthly revenue of $72,000, which is, again, I didn't have it two minutes ago, and now you have it. It's something very, very interesting for them. Let's see how it looks on real time. Okay. Um, we're not pushing all our teasers on all the front pages. We don't want to create a party on their page. We're choosing selectively with AI, where are the good location to put our teasers. We're measuring it and then we're optimizing it all the time. The top videos, you can place it in any location, bottom of the pages, mid pages, home pages, wherever you want. Every click that they will generate, again, will lead them to another page with the full version of the video. That's it. I hope it wasn't too boring. Um, and good luck. Have a nice day. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Amit. Now it's the questions. So please feel free to ask questions. Yes. The idea is we have two things in mind. The first one is how from the thousand users that brought to your site, how do you increase the consumption of them? Like the user journey. That's one thing. So with what we do today, it's quite simple to understand. The best place that you can actually monetize your users are on your site. So what we do is you can share all the things that I showed outside. And then every click that you'll generate on those teasers will actually lead you back to your pages. Yes, but it depends on the goals. Like if you want to engage users with your content in different locations, obviously we can do it, but then we're shifting from teasing the users and hooking them to different things into the location they're at right now. Uh, so you can choose between teasers and highlights. That's a game that we can play. More questions? Amit, can you share uh, your experience from the day of innovation we had last week? Uh, yes, of course. So we're we were last week, um, I know from, from home, it's not sounds very good because <laughs> I'm all the time in different locations, uh, but we went to Switzerland, to Zug, and um, if I pronounce it well, um, and we had shown all the in front company basically what we can do with all their entities. Um, we had afterwards, after the, um, the short presentation to everyone, we had two or five different sessions with each and every division within Infront um, of two hours. I know it sounds a lot, but it was quite short. Um, of what we can do together. So there's different divisions um, from summer sports, winter sports, production, football, uh, football and uh, personnel. personnel. Yeah. Yeah. So for each and every one of them, we can do very interesting stuff. Again, we're trying to partner with the, with the clients. We're not trying to sell and go. Um, we're trying to understand what are the motivations from a client perspective. Exactly like what you said, I'm not looking for money. So A, it's an amazing situation. <laughs> Can I be like this too? <laughs> and B, um, what their actual, actual goals. How if you can um, create ticket sales, merchandise, those are different things and we can work on that side. Um, with Fox Sports, for example, and Disney, we've partnered together and we've analyzed the whole world stuff. Their mission was to increase subscribers to um, their 
an OTT channel is good. It works because we've always done it together. So it's a partnership and less sales stuff. And it's a very quick and easy partnership. Perfect. So as you can see back, the, the beer is here. I would like to thank Marisa for organizing and bringing this together. Uh, enjoy the beer. Cheers. And thank you very much. So before, before you're leaving, just two more important information. First of all, thank you very much to all of you guys. Please give them a big hand. Thank you. I would like to invite you to the get together now. It's as usual taking place at the summit area and brand new this year at the expo area as well with a lot of Red Bull. So thank you very much for your attention and enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you.